Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. It's been a long time since you've seen me in the kitchen. Today I'm going to share with you one of my favourite apple cake recipes. I've been making this cake for probably 30 to 40 years and because Chris and I went to a really strict low carb diet for several years and we're really just coming back to the naughty side of things, this is the first high carb cake that I'm going to be making. Hang around and I'm going to show you how to make my favourite moist apple cake. These are all the ingredients we need to be able to make our apple cake. I've got 125 grams of butter which is 4 ounces. I've got 3 quarters of a cup of sugar. Now Chris and I don't eat sugar and we generally don't use flour either although we are using it today. Instead of using normal white sugar I'm using xylitol. So you can use three quarters of a cup of sugar. I'm using three quarters of a cup of xylitol here, which is the sweetener that we prefer to use. I've got two eggs with the egg whites. I've got some vanilla and only need half a teaspoon of that, but I usually just guess that. I've got one and a half cups of self-raising flour. Now I'm going to confess to you, I don't sift my flour. I just throw it in as is. I've got two green apples or Granny Smith apples and I have got a quarter of a cup of cream but I'm going to extend this out to half a cup. So in total I'll have half a cup of liquid. I'll have a quarter of a cup of cream and a quarter of a cup of water to give me a half a cup. Milk has got a little bit more sugar in it than cream does so we try to save on sugar as much as possible. So I'm using half cream and half water but if you want to, you can go and use a half a cup of milk. I'm going to start by putting the softened butter into my mixing bowl and I'll add the sweetener as well. I'm also going to add just half a teaspoon of vanilla extract and I'll just guess that. That's probably a little bit more than needed, but that's good. Now I'll go and mix this up and then I'll add the eggs. With the butter, sugar and vanilla extract in the bowl, I'm ready to start mixing. And once the sugar and the butter is creamed together nicely, I'll add some eggs. So I'm going to pop both my eggs in there. Every now and then I'll just go and bring the sides down just to make sure everything is mixed. Some mixes are better than others at doing this. And when that's sufficiently mixed you can start adding your flour and your cream or water mixture or your milk. So you'll just alternate your dry ingredients and your wet ingredients. I'll pop some flour in. I've probably put about half of the flour in and about the same of the milk mixture. Mix it again. And I'll add the rest of the flour now and the rest of the milk or water, uh, milk or cream. And I'll just mix that together for a few minutes until it looks nice or probably not even that long. It really depends on the mixer that you're using. So again, I'll push the sides down if it needs to. It doesn't really need to. And if you know your cake batters, you can actually give it a little bit of a taste just to make sure it tastes okay. Mix it for another few seconds. And our cake mix is ready. All we need to do is put our apples in and then whack it in the oven. The cake mix is looking really nice. You don't want this to be too wet and runny because we've still got the apples to add to this. So it needs to be firm and your spatula will almost stand up like that. We'll peel and core our apples and then we'll slice them up. And then we can just thinly slice up the apples. OK, 
okay they're ready to now go in with our cake mix so all that's left for us to do is put our cake mix into our tin I've folded up a piece of baking paper and just cut that into a circle and I'll just place that on the inside of my tin just on the base and I've also sprayed my tin as well so the paper will stick to that and I've sprayed the sides and I'll give the paper a bit of a spray as well. Now I can put the cake mix in. So you can see how thick this is, but when we put the apple in, the moisture from the apple will really make this cake nice and moist. This tin's probably a little bit big. It'll be delicious anyway. So just arrange the apple in slices around the side of the cake. It doesn't have to be pretty, it just goes all the way around and then we cover it with the batter that's in there as well. You could easily uh, chop up all of these apples into smaller pieces and put it into the cake mixture and then just shove it all into the pan all at the same time. It makes it equally as nice. And then just pat the apple down and swirl it around until you've got the apple covered with a cake mix. And just make sure you've got an even amount of apple throughout the entire mixture. So you can see it didn't have to be laid down in any pretty order. And once you've got all that nice and level, you can stick it in the oven. I did forget to mention you need to preheat the oven to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit. Let's go and put this in the oven now for 50 to 55 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit. I'll put the timer on now and we'll come back in about 50 minutes. Okay, the 50 minutes is up. and the cake's looking really nice. I'm just going to pop a skewer in and make sure that the mix comes out clean and that looks really good. So 50 minutes is all this cake has taken. Looking delightful. So I'll pop that onto a cooling rack and I'll release the cake from the sides. Just let that cool down for a few minutes and then I'll turn that upside down onto my cooling rack. Okay, the tin has cooled to the touch, so I'm just going to release that from the side of the cake and that'll help cool the whole thing down a little bit more. Once the cake is cooled to the touch, I'll flip it upside down and remove the base so that I can cool the rest of it. I'm going to place my tray on top, flip it upside down, and then I'll just remove the paper and the tray. Then I'll let the rest of the cake cool down properly. Okay, cake's cooled down and the very last thing that we need to do is just decorate it with a little bit of powdered sugar or icing sugar. Rather than purchasing it, I usually just put a couple of teaspoons of uh, sugar or xylitol into a coffee grinder. So that only needs a few seconds and we've got some nice powdered sugar there and I'll just shake that out over the top of the cake. Okay, you're going to have to forgive my primitive tool here, but I have lost my uh, little sieve. So I've got a little cheese grater or a garlic grater. I'm just going to sprinkle some powdered sugar onto that and sprinkle it over the cake. It's going a little bit thicker than I'd like it to. We really just want a light dusting over the top of the cake. And that's it. So it really doesn't matter what tool you use, just as long as you can get a nice dusting of powdered sugar on your cake. Okay, let's dish it up. So there we go. It's, you'll see that it's actually really, really moist on the inside. So it didn't need any more liquid in the cake because of the moisture from the apples. And you can't have cake without cream. So I've gone and whipped up some cream and I'll go and get my favorite guinea pig, Chris, and he can come and do a taste test. 
Here's my guinea pig now. Oh. Come on over. <laughs> I've been working in the shed and I'm missing out all on all right. this. Do you want this one or that one? <laughs> this one will do. Actually, this one's bigger. There you go. And what is it? It's my apple cake that I haven't made in a long time. Fabulous. So can I eat this now? Yeah. Do I need to eat it on camera? You need to survive. I'll survive. <laughs> I'll be back for another yeah, come and You can eat it on camera. No. You can tell everyone how delicious it is. I, I can tell it will be. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, of course it is. A lot of apple in it too. I like yes. that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Coco wants some too, but she can't have it. It's mine. Sorry. I have to make a dog apple cake for Coco. There's a video. All right. So there we go. A nice moist apple cake, which is, as I said, a recipe that I have been baking for 30 to 40 years. So it's got to be good. Hope you enjoy this recipe and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now. Oh, sorry, Coco. You don't get any. Mmm. <laughs> you want some peanut butter? Yeah? <laughs>